This afternoon, my heart is heavy. My heart goes out to the family and the friends of the man who was killed last night on the streets of our city. I mourn with you. I'm going to support the police chief and the district attorney in apprehending and holding accountable those who are responsible for the homicide last night. I stand here with the police chief and the district attorney to again denounce the violence. The tragedy of last night cannot be repeated. All of us make, must take a stance against violence. And it doesn't matter who you are or what your politics are. We have to all stop the violence. For those of you saying on Twitter this morning that you plan to come to Portland to seek retribution, I'm calling on you to stay away. You, of course, have a constitutional right to be here, but we're asking you to stay away and work with us to help us de-escalate this situation. And Portlanders, I'm asking all of us to do our part too. One death is one death too many. Join me in denouncing all violence. Let's pull together in the name of peace and humanity. We don't always have to agree, but we've long done so without violence. That's part of what makes this nation strong. Let's end this long, hard summer and come together and work to support and lift each other, not tear each other apart. I'm going to continue to work with the community on the historic changes that we've already made and have committed to making as we reimagine what public safety and racial justice can look like in our community. And we'll continue to do that work in the weeks and the months ahead. There's so much work to do and I'll be intentionally engaging the public as we proceed along these, the, proceed to uh, engage in that hard work together. Yesterday's events began with hundreds of cars filled with supporters of the president rallying in Clackamas County and then driving through downtown Portland. They were supported and energized by the president himself. President Trump, for four years, We've had to live with you and your racist attacks on black people. We learned early about your sexist attitudes towards women. We've had to endure clips of you mocking a disabled man. We've had to listen to your anti-democratic attacks on journalists. We've read your tweets slamming private citizens to the point of receiving death threats. And we've listened to your attacks on immigrants. We've listened to you label Mexicans rapists. We've heard you say that John McCain wasn't a hero because he was a prisoner of war. And now you're attacking Democratic mayors and the very institutions of democracy that have served this nation well since its founding. Do you seriously wonder, Mr. President, why this is the first time in decades that America has seen this level of violence? It's you who have created the hate and the division. It's you who have not found a way to say the names of black people killed by police officers, even as people in law enforcement have. And it's you who claimed that white supremacists are good people. Your campaign of fear is as anti-democratic as anything you've done to create hate and vitriol in our beautiful country. You've tried to divide us more than any other figure in modern history. And now you want me to stop the violence that you helped create. What America needs is for you to be stopped so that we can come back together as one America while recognizing that we must demand that all people, black, brown, white, every color from every political persuasion pull together and hold all people accountable in stopping racism and violence. And we together are peaceful again under new leadership that reflects who we really are. We the people of this great nation. President Trump, you bring no peace. 
You bring no respect to our democracy. You, Mr. President, need to do your job as the leader of this nation. And I, Mr. President, will do my job as the mayor of this city. And we will both be held accountable, as we should. I'm also calling out every other elected official in Oregon to join me, not only in defeating racism, but also in helping me to stop the violence, as we are and will continue to be held accountable by all of our residents. Today, we need to decide who we are and where we want to go from here. Don't let this be the spark that sets off an acceleration of hostilities in our beautiful city. Those are not our values. What happened last night does not move us forward. It sets us back. I know the values of this community. I was born and raised here. I found my living here. I raised my family here. This is where I want to be, and I know the values of this community. We want to protest powerfully and peacefully. We believe that black lives matter, and we believe that it's the responsibility of our leaders to ensure that the systems that we have in place to protect and serve do so equitably. Let's engage with each other in thoughtful dialogue about reform and use the power of our shared values to move forward together. We must recommit our energy and our resources to advancing the work of reform and the transformation of our systems. We've seen the positive power of collective and focused and nonviolent action. We've seen the change. Our responsibility to each other is to keep moving forward. Portland is counting on its leaders, the city, the county, the state, our federal partners, to partner and use the collective power of our offices to create a better future for all of us. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to dig into the Portland mayor's pathetic excuses and deflections for yet more political violence in his city. But first, just let me take a quick moment to tell you about this special offer from this episode's sponsor, My Patriot Supply. When you see what's going on in our country right now, there's plenty to be concerned about. Social unrest is making life very uncomfortable and it could quickly get worse. Will we have severe food shortages this time? Will supply chains get cut off if people can't work? Will you even be able to go to the grocery store? These are realistic dangers, so don't let yourself be caught unprepared. Here's what to do right now. Go to www.preparewithdronetech.com and start building your emergency food supply today. The experts at My Patriot Supply are the only people I trust and use. And right now, you can save $100 off a full four-week supply of delicious, nutritious meals the whole family will love. My Patriot Supply makes it easy to be prepared at all times. And saving $100 off a life-saving four-week supply of food is too good to pass up. The second half of 2020 is gonna be wild so go to preparewithdronetech.com and get ready right now that's preparewithdronetech.com do it now so back to the portland mayor blaming trump blaming trump and racism for the murder of a white man by a white communist another white guy it's just wow I just, it takes, he takes no responsibility and just repeatedly lies about Trump. And I'm sure you guys caught that because I'm going to make it obvious in the video. And you've heard these lies multiple times. And I have no doubt that everything he said there, that all of it was untrue, that none of it will be fact-checked in the media. Of course, Trump never called Mexicans rapists. Look up the quote. He didn't say that. And I'm not aware of any, quote, racist attacks on black people. He, he keeps talking about how they had to endure it. What's he talking about? I have no idea. And then he says uh, uh, anti-democratic attacks on journalists. Anti-democratic attacks. Oh, journalists are just far above criticism, especially journalists in the U.S., right? <laughs> These people that are just like such obvious partisan political hacks, they're above criticism. But, you know, attacking Fox News, that's just fine. Ted Wheeler's never attacked Fox News, right? And Barack Obama never did that. 
Democrats don't do that. The media doesn't do it. It's okay to attack them. That's different. And then uh, the granddaddy of all lies, <laughs> he said it once again that Trump called white supremacists good people. And there's different variations of that claim, but they're all lies. It's a long, debunked dead horse. But again, he won't get fact checked on it by anybody but folks like me, which is just really sad. So what we're watching right now is the Democrats slowly realizing that they've screwed themselves by backing these violent communists. And, uh, you know, for a long time, they and their media just denied that it was happening for months. Democrats called it a conspiracy theory. You know, let's not forget that it was Trump who sent federal forces to try and quell this violence when it began. And really, I mean, it had been going on for a long time before that. I mean, you know, especially when we're talking about Portland, violence with Antifa and by all means necessary and uh, now BLM, that stuff's been going on there a long time before Trump got there. And you, we got to remember this. It's not Republicans writing. It's not Trump supporters. It's a cadre of far left extremists of various stripes. You got socialists, Marxists, communists, and anar anarchists. Anybody who looks into the groups that are organizing uh, can see this. They're very open about it. It's not a secret. Uh, they claim that you know, that this is Trump's fault, yet this is happening in Democrat-run cities, okay? And the people protesting, you know, they're protesting all these things, yet these these things that are happening to them, this, they quote systemic racism, um, it's happening in Democrat-run cities that they continue to vote for, but it's Trump's fault. And <clears throat> so, you know, it's no surprise at this point that the Democrats are echoing the media, and well, and, and actually, it's not that it Biden is the one that actually put out the marching orders yesterday and started blaming Trump. So what happens? The media follows suit and starts doing the same thing. And lastly, here real quick, uh, I just want to remind everybody that, you know, it was the Democrat media that popularized conspiracy theories like hands up, don't shoot. That led to real violence and destruction. And these uh, excuses are still used as justification to this day for violence and rioting. That's not Trump's fault. And, you know, nobody in the media ever paid a price. None of the Democrats are in the media paid a price for spewing those lies. The fact that this is all happening in Democrat-run cities doesn't seem to matter because there's no scrutiny or criticism of Democrat policies anywhere in the media. Where can you find it? It's nowhere. It's not in the late-night shows. It's not in the comedy show, the political comedy shows. No, they just kind of get to skate. And so this is what, uh, you know, this is what's going on in our country now, where we used to have a free press, but now it's nowhere to be found in our former fourth estate. From right now until the election, all we're going to hear is how all this violence is Trump's fault, because they can't stop it at this point. I mean, it takes, it takes months for the American people to sort of change their position, you know, on politics and who are the support. They're not going to stop this, but the American people have seen enough of it. So I think that... This reaction is late, and I don't think it'll work, but it is an act of desperation, and we're going to see more of it. We're, they're going to continue to to turn up the rhetoric, turn up the heat. While they're blaming Trump for inc inciting this violence, it's going to be them out there calling Trump an existential threat, calling Trump and his supporters evil racists, you know, to incite their followers to go out there and continue destroying, rioting, and looting. That's all I have for today, folks. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It really helps this channel. If you'd like to support this channel by donating, you can do so by using one of the platforms that are listed in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks for watching, everybody. Keep coming back.